Hello everyone. In this video, I'll be explaining about the properties and reactions of alcohols. So first of all, what are alcohols? Alcohols are nothing but they are hydroxy derivatives of aliphatic hydrocarbons. So what is happening here is one of the hydrogen okay, of the aliphatic hydrocarbon will be replaced by OH group. Then we will get respective alcohols. So it may, it may not be always one hydrogen which is replaced by OH. It can be two, three or more than three based on the type of alcohols that are formed. But usually we define these alcohols as hydroxy derivatives of hydrocarbons wherein the hydrogen of the hydrocarbon is replaced by OH group. So here you can see this example. Methane. Here you can see the methane. One hydrogen of methane is replaced by hydroxy group. So we get methanol alcohol. So here we can see this. These are represented, the alcohols are represented by the general formula ROH. So R can be an alkyl group or substituted alkyl group. But R cannot be a phenyl group because if a phenyl ring this is a benzene ring which is directly attached to OH, then it becomes a phenol. So here we can see that the R group can be alkyl group or substituted alkyl group. So some examples of alcohols include ethanol. Here two carbons are there. So the respective hydrocarbon is ethane. One hydrogen of ethane, when it is replaced by OH, we get ethanol. Same way, here there are three carbons. So respective hydrocarbon is propane. One of the hydrogen of propane is replaced by OH. So we get propanol. Here, if, one, if this is hydrogen, then it is isopropane. But the hydrogen of isopropane is replaced by OH. So the name of this alcohol is isopropanol. Now coming on to the classification of alcohols. The first way of classifying alcohol is based on the number of OH groups. Now, if there is only one OH group in the molecule, we call it as monohydric alcohol. So examples include methanol. Here we have propanol. Here we can see there is only one OH group in the molecule. Dihydric alcohols, as the name suggests, there are two OH groups in the molecule of the alcohol. So here we can see there are two OH groups. So example is ethylene glycol. Dihydric alcohol, there are three OH groups in one molecule of alcohol. Example is glycerol. Next, there can also be more number of OH groups in a single molecule of alcohol. So they are called as polyhydric alcohols. So here we can see there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 OH groups in one molecule of the alcohol. So it is named as polyhydric alcohol. So example is sorbitol. That was one method of classification of alcohols. The other method of classification of alcohol is based on the nature of hydrocarbon moiety. So if the moiety which is attached to the OH group is completely alkyl in nature, then we call it as aliphatic alcohol. So examples, the common examples we can say methanol, ethanol, opanol, etc. If the moiety which is attached to the OH group is a substituted alkyl group which has a phenyl ring attached to the alkyl group, then we can say that if there is a, a benzene ring which is present in the molecule of the alcohol, then we call such type of alcohols as aromatic alcohols. The example is benzyl alcohol. Next method of classification of alcohol is based on the nature of carbon atom which is bearing the OH group. Now, here we can see the ones which I am marking, the carbon atoms which I am marking are the carbon atoms which are attached to the OH groups. We have to observe 
what is the nature of the carbon atom which is attached to the OH group. Here, this carbon is a primary carbon atom because it is connected to only one alkyl group that is R group. So, this alcohol is called as primary alcohol. Here, this carbon is attached to two alkyl groups R1 and R2. So, the alcohol is called as secondary alcohol. Here we have the carbon which is attached to three alkyl groups. So, that is a tertiary carbon atom. So, the alcohol is named as tertiary alcohol. So, example for primary alcohol. Simple examples we can give methanol, ethanol, propanol, etc. Secondary alcohol, here we can see the carbon. Here this is a secondary carbon atom. So the OH group is attached to the secondary carbon atom. So isopropanol. Here we have the tertiary carbon atom which is attached to three R groups. So the OH group is attached to the tertiary carbon atom. So example is tertiary butanol tertiary butyl alcohol. Next is methods of preparation of alcohols. So first one is the simple method that is hydration of alkenes. So here we take the alkenes and add in the presence of water, the presence of acidic medium, we can get respective alcohols. What we need to consider here is the addition of water to the alkenes takes place according to Markovnikov's rule. So according to Markovnikov's rule, the positive part of the addendum will add to the carbon having more number of hydrogen atoms. Or you can also define it in other way, that is the negative part of the addendum will add to the carbon which is having less number of hydrogen atoms. So here in this example, we are considering a symmetric alkene. So here there is no uh, need of explaining about Markovnikov's rule. So this water molecule, which is first splitting into OH and H. So one H will add to one carbon and the OH will add to the other carbon. So here H will be the H plus, which is the positive addendum and OH will be the OH minus, which is the negative addendum. Now here we can see in this example, this is an unsymmetrical alkene. So we know that water molecule will split into OH minus and H plus. So according to Markovnikov's rule, the positive addendum should add the carbon having more number of hydrogen atoms. So in this double bond, the carbon atoms which are involved in the double bond need to see which is the carbon having more number of hydrogens. So here we can see this carbon has two hydrogen atoms, whereas this carbon has only one hydrogen. So the positive part of the addendum will add to this carbon which has more number of hydrogens, whereas the negative part of the addendum will add to the carbon having less number of hydrogen. So here we can see the product that is formed is CH3 remains as such. Here to this carbon the OH group is added so CHOH and to this carbon H is added so we get CH3. So this is how we need to interpret the formation of alcohols on the basis of Markovnikov's rule. So here also we know that the water will give the negative addendum, uh, the negative part that is OH minus and this will be H plus, positive part of the addendum. So here again we need to consider the two carbons involved in the double bond. This carbon has two hydrogens. So the positive part of the addendum will add to the carbon having more number of hydrogens. So we this adds here and this OH minus will add to this carbon. So we can see product that is formed here is tertiary butyl alcohol. So the OH groups add to this carbon which is attached to the alkyl groups. So we get the tertiary butyl alcohol as the product. Next method of preparation of alcohol is 
from carboxylic acids and esters. So we know that by reduction of these acids as well as esters, we can get respective alcohols. So lithium aluminium hydride is used as a strong reducing agent which will reduce the respective acids as well as esters to give the respective alcohols. So we know that the reduction is nothing but removal of oxygen or the addition of hydrogen to the substrate molecule. So we can see here this carbon, this carbon, oxygen which is there is removed off. In the place of oxygen, the hydrogens are added so that we get respective alcohols as the product. Same way here, the oxygen of this ester is removed off. Hydrogens are added, which is nothing but a reduction. And we get the respective alcohol and the byproduct of alcohol, which is due to the ester group. Next is from aldehydes and ketones, again by reduction. Here we use a specific method, which is mervine pond of Verley reaction in order to reduce the aldehydes or ketones to give respective alcohols. One thing what we have to remember here is the solvent which is used as isopropyl alcohol and the catalyst which we use in this reaction is aluminium isopropoxide. So we take an aldehyde or a ketone in the presence of this catalyst aluminium isopropoxide in the solvent which is used is isopropyl alcohol, we get respective alcohol because of the reduction of this carbonyl group. So we know that usually acids will get reduced to aldehydes or ketones. The aldehydes or ketones on reduction will give respective alcohols. So here we know that reduction is nothing but removal of oxygen or addition of hydrogen. So here we know that this carbonyl group that is getting reduced so that the oxygen is removed and the hydrogen is added in its place. So we get respective alcohol. Whereas here, when one of the substrate is getting reduced, the other substrate gets oxidized. So oxidation is nothing but removal of hydrogen or addition of oxygen. So here, the hydrogen, two hydrogens of this isopropanol is reduced or removed off so that we get the respective acetone. So the isopropanol is oxidized to acetone, whereas the aldehyde or ketone, which is taken, gets reduced to respective alcohols. Next is hydroboration oxidation of alkenes. So first we saw alkenes can be hydrated to give respective alcohols. Now we can see that the hydroboration oxidation reaction of alkenes also will give rise to respective alcohols. So alkenes will react with diborane. So diborane, although the formula is B2H6, when it adds to alkenes, it adds as BH3. So it will split, this BH3 will split into BH2 and H. BH2 and H. So here what happens is the boron atom, that is the part which contains the boron, will add to the carbon having more number of hydrogen atoms. So this rule we have to keep in mind when we are writing the products for this hydroboration oxidation reaction. So the part which contains boron after splitting of the BH3 molecule, that part will add to the carbon of the double bond which has more number of hydrogen atoms. So we can see this reaction. So here BH3 will split into BH2 and H. So this BH2 will add to the carbon having more number of hydrogens. So we get the molecule CH3, CH2, CH2. So here the hydrogen is adding to this carbon. So this adds to this carbon and the BH2. The part containing boron will add to the carbon having more number of hydrogens. So we get this molecule in the first step. Next on addition of one more molecule of alkene, this again splits into H, 
and the remaining part this entire thing will be the other part so bh ch3 ch2 ch2 so we get again the part containing boron will add to the carbon having more number of hydrogens so we get this product as this from the second step again on addition of one more molecule of alkene we get the tripropyl borane so at the last step what happens is we we make this molecule to undergo hydrolysis the presence of hydrogen peroxide in the presence of a base so we get finally three molecules of propenol 